See, we're almost there! <laughs> okay. Like many of you, I joke about Genshin Impact a lot. And some might think I dislike the game, but that isn't really the case. What I find interesting is how some people develop extreme loyalty to certain brands or individuals, almost like an obsession. You see this with people who only wear specific brand name clothing, only buy Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo products. Others will never touch an Android product, even though said product costs three times less than its Apple counterpart and is capable of performing the same task. In recent years, some have developed the mentality that if a game isn't made by Hoyo, then it's pretty much dead on arrival. I sometimes wonder if these people have family members working for Hoyo, or if they themselves are getting paid by Hoyo, because that level of loyalty just doesn't make sense otherwise. As a consumer, I want more games in this genre because it pushes companies to work harder to keep my business. Why wouldn't anyone want more competition, especially when it clearly benefits them? Right now, I'm enjoying Wuthering Waves, but when Azure Promilia, Never Nest to Everness, or Project Mugen launch, I'll likely switch to one of them. And guess what Kuro Games will do when they see their player base migrating? They'll work to improve Wuthering Waves, fixing any weak points to retain their players and possibly win back those who left. Why wouldn't you want that as a consumer? Genshin Impact has dominated this space for over five years, and in that time, it often felt like they pretended their player base didn't exist. The only time I recall them acknowledging feedback was during the Zhongli situation. And even then, it was more of a response to the Chinese player base rather than the global community. Since then, they've remained silent, even offering a generic post to say, hey, we know you'd like to see X, Y, and Z, but this is the direction we're taking Genshin, and we won't be able to accommodate those expectations. Would have been welcomed. I don't know if they've made such a statement because I pretty much peace out sometime during the Inazuma arc. They've just did whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted, without considering player feedback. Any improvements they make now aren't being made out of love for their player base or out of acknowledgement for their concerns. It's purely out of self-preservation. And to me, that's too little, too late. That being said though, I might log back in to get the new Archon. I have free-to-play gems saved up. In short, I don't hate Genshin, nor do I want to see it fail. Remember, competition is good. I am just disappointed. So what would it take for me to get back into the game? Well, here's the situation. Right now, I can't think of a single reason to play Genshin, because all the niches it used to fulfill are now covered by Wuthering Waves. Since I don't enjoy the story, that alone isn't enough to draw me back. Although Genshin's world is big and beautiful, it's also empty. You'll never walk out of a hidden dungeon with more than a few primos and the feelings you had while exploring said space, because anything useful is locked behind its banners. So I have no interest in exploring its world either. I also have no interest in getting new characters, because the leveling process has become torturous. Run ascension domains thousands of times, talent domains thousands of times, weapon ascension domains thousands of times, then spend days collecting plants, and weeks defeating bosses that drop materials three times a week. Finally, after all that, you can play with one new character. Now repeat this for the next 50 years with every new character. Man, do I miss the days when your character's level could be improved by just defeating enemies found out in the world. I have no interest in racing against a timer in the Abyss either. I'm not saying Genshin needs destiny levels of endgame content, but the Abyss format has long overstayed its welcome. I'd settle for destiny-style dungeons, though. At least then I'd have a reason to invest so much time in building new characters. By now, some of you might be calling me a hypocrite because Wuthering Waves uses similar tactics. And you're right, but brother, I'm tired of it there too. In fact, every game that comes out from now on that uses these type of gameplay loop will inherit a large portion of players like me. We go into those games already exhausted from their mechanics thanks to Genshin, Wuthering Waves, and heck even Tower of Fantasy. Also, this is a hot take, but the story is complete garbage. I enlisted for Kiana, but I am pretty sure that character have never been seeing or spoken about even once during these past 25 years. We literally had three freaking objectives as far as I can remember. Find sibling, find Kiana, and reclaim our power and get the freak out of Tevat. How is this sh not over yet? We could have wrapped this up back in the Venti arc. So no, I don't hate Genshin. And I don't think Wuthering Waves is that much better. But at least Kuro Games is listening. At least they're acknowledging our concerns. At least they're taking responsibility when their player base is inconvenienced due to their errors and rewarding us generously.
More importantly, it feels like they truly respect our time. As I grow older, I've come to realize that time is the most important thing we have in this fleeting life. No one knows how much time they have left, so spending it wisely is advised. But if you want to spend what little time you have left being treated like a doormat, I won't stop you. Uh, is the painting witness? The art's true form. <laughs>